I'm really into geometries these days, and this is the reason. Yes, we're gonna create those stunning 3D double flowers using math equations in this P5JS. Recently, I got to know about this 3D math rules on the website written by Paul Nilander. He creates a lot of amazing works by math, physics, and computer science and share on the website. You can see many wonderful products and CGI, sometimes with the equations. You see that? In this video, we're gonna put these equations into our P5JS. The equations look complicated, but don't worry. To explain these equations, I actually go back to the basics of the trigonometry and show you all the process creating the equations. So you watching this video not only get the exact visual result, but also get the meta sense that how to build math equations to generate whatever shapes you want. Alright, to create a 3D structure like that, we're gonna use a concept called a spherical coordinate system. I explain the fundamental. This is Cartesian coordinate system that we use XYZ to define the location in 3D space. But we can also define the exact location with other three things, which are the row, the length from the center, the phi, which is vertical angle between this segment and the z axis. And lastly, the theta the horizontal angle between this segment and the x-axis. When we generate roughly spherical figure like this, this coordinate is very handy. But unfortunately, the P5 functions like ellipse, points, vertex require the xyz of the Cartesian coordinates. So we need to figure out the conversion between the low phi theta to the xyz. Which means we need to figure out the length of the xyz using these three things. And that's not actually difficult. According to Sokatoa, the adjacent is defined by hypotenuse times cosine of the angle. So, when this angle is phi, this adjacent, which is the z value, gonna be like rho cosine phi. Right? You get that? And this segment is the opposite of the phi, right? And the opposite is defined by hypotenuse times sine of the angle. So, this length is gonna be like rho sine phi. Then we take a look at those two small triangles. The two have the rho sine phi as hypotenuse and also have the theta as angle. So, following the Sokatoa, the x is adjacent, so the length is gonna be like rho sine phi cosine theta. On the other hand, this length is the opposite, so it's gonna be like rho sine phi sine theta. Okay? So, now we have the three parametric equations to convert the spherical coordinate to XYZ of the Cartesian coordinate. Oh, but however, in P5JS environment, the three axes are flipped like this. We have a X axis horizontally, Y axis vertically, and Z axis as depth, right? So the formulas are also changed like this. So, now we're gonna use those three equations to create the 3D rows. So now we're gonna actually design the rows here. In the initial setup function, I set the color mode to HSV and angle mode to degrees for convenience to me. In the draw function, I'm drawing the dark blue background. Alright, so let's implement the spherical coordinate system. At first, I'm gonna make a sphere by plotting a lot of points on the surface. Inside of the nested loop, I put the three equations we just figured out. Okay, that looks great. Uh, if you don't like this color scheme, I want you to pick the one feels right for you. Now, let's mess up this beautiful sphere to achieve the flower shape. So if you look at the closer the final result, you notice actually that's basically a spherical spiral shape. So I want to make a simple spherical spiral from this sphere. So I actually remove the phi loop, then replace all the phi inside the loop with the theta. Hmm, interesting, but I want to increase the number of the spin, and the number of the spin is sensitive to the ratio of those three angles and those other two angles. 
So、uh, when I increase the frequency of the two theta, like three, oh,、uh, I increase the density a bit. All right, what about five? What about eight? Yeah, that's what I want. Now we have the spherical spiral. Oh, hey, by the way, at this moment, if we also increase these three angles' frequency, yeah, something happens. I increase this range to 360, also this density to crazy high. Yeah, we got this. This is mathematically called spherical research curve, and this thing alone gives you a lot of fun to play with. But yeah, that's kinda off topic here. Go back to the 3D rows. I actually undo these multiplying, then instead divide these three theta by the same amount. Oh, I also need to multiply the range by the same amount. And yeah, that creates the same shape. Because the ratio between this side and the other side hasn't been changed. Alright, next, look at the rows. The shape is consists of the many of the spiral with different radius. You see that? So we need an another loop outside here. I set the range as from 0 to 1. Then multiply the radius to 50 by the amount. Hmm, feel like we've made some progress. <laughs> Alright, now the pedal is reaching to the bottom, but we want to push it up to the upper half. To do that, I have this theta frequency like 16. Hmm, that looks great. I make the density a bit lower. Alright. Hmm, but the final result, the openness of the pedal is not that equal interval. That looks exponential. So, I take the Euler's number to the power of the theta frequency. <laughs>、uh, I just messed it up. Okay, this is because the value went too big. So, instead, I divided by 800.、Uh, the petal has been crossed. What about 5? 300? Hmm, the openness, the increment rate seems too high. So, I actually reset this value to 800 again. Then multiply some value to this exponential term. Okay, too small. 7? 12? What about 15? Hmm, I think it's very close. I want to have more petals, so I increase the theta range to 15 pi. Also increase this value to 1500. Perfection. Uh, let's assign the set of terms in a variable phi, because that part is responsible for the vertical alignment of the petals. It's a bit hard to see the small detail here, right? So I want to make a gradient color by changing the saturation and brightness depend on the radius. Yeah, much better. Alright, next thing I want to make is this petal hanging down. To achieve that, I want to add something to this y value. So,、uh, what is gonna be? Well, if we look at the petal, from the center gradually lift it up, then goes down. I mean, that's depend on the distance from the center. So the value definitely n e e d to contain the r. So I make this variable hang down, then add that to the y value. Oops,、uh, adding the value brings the petals up, so I actually need to subtract.、Uh, <laughs> kind of feel just messed up, but I keep going. Okay,、uh, this kind of gradual smooth curve requires some kind of exponential term. So I actually make this hang down like exponential, like to the power of 2. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Don't click away, I can still handle this. Why this thing become like this? Because I just took the radius value to the power of 2 here. So, more far away from the center, the more petals go down exponentially. Right? And now look at this. This is simple exponential, y equal minus x to the power of 2, and which I make it resemble this term. So, you can explain this shape here by this graph. 
Then now, let me subtract one from this x and see what happens. Yeah, the graph just shifted to the right direction, right? So now the center is the lowest and the outside is the highest. So let's do the same in the code. Hmm, that looks kind of great. The shape is the same as the graph. And the thing is, what if I combine these two terms? Yeah, now we got the gradual curve here. You see that? When I make a coefficient here, like 3, hmm, what about 6? That amplified a ball shape. For now, I leave it like 2. Okay, on the other hand, when I make another coefficient here, and gradually increase, hmm, the tip of the petals hang down more. But at this moment, the petals from the top to the bottom equally hanging down like this. But I don't want that. Uh, look at the final result. The top petals are not that affected, but more go down to the bottom, more the petal is hanging down, right? And that's achieved by adding the sine function here. Oh, I need to bring this down to here under the phi, because this includes the phi. Yeah, now we see the difference between the top to the bottom. The angle of phi, uh, this, is responsible for the vertical shape. And the value of the sine function is always 0 to 1, right? So at the top, the sine phi is 0, whereas at the bottom, which is nearly 90 degrees, the value of the sine phi is close to 1. Alright, the last thing we add is the cut of the petals. If we unfold the 3D rows, it looks like this. Kinda squarish waves, right? We can come up with several ways to achieve this kind of curve, but one way we can start in this course is this. We use the reminder of the theta divided by 360. The theta range is now from 0 to 180 times 15, right? So currently the shape is rolling 7 laps and a half. But uh, look at this graph. I just made it resemble the reminder of the theta divided by 360. And look at this. No matter how far the theta range goes, the reminder is repeated from 0 to 360. So we can use this for achieving the squarish waves eventually. So I make a variable petal cut, then assign the reminder of the theta divided by 360. I normalize the value range from 0 to 1 by dividing by 360. Then I multiply the three parametric equations by this petal cut. Hmm, <laughs> now uh, we haven't messed up anything. Now we are multiplying by the reminder of the theta divided by 360. So this each sole teeth, the width is 360 degrees, which is length of one lap. And that's why we are seeing shape like this. And it gets interesting when we multiply the theta by some amount. Hmm, interesting. So uh, what about 3? Five. Okay, and even more interesting when we multiply by a floating number like 3.6. Hmm, that's very exciting. This already resembles the final result. Okay, but the petals are too sharp enough to someone get hurt. I don't want any of you from my tutorial to get hurt. <laughs> so uh, I want to make the petals rounded shape. To do that, first I actually changed this 360 to 180. It got bigger since I changed it to divided by 180 here. So the range of this petal cut is now from this 0 to 2. Then I actually want to map the range to from 0 to 2 to from minus 1 to 1. So I actually subtract all of this from 1. Yeah, the salty shape just flipped this way. Just flipped. But the range has become from minus 1 to 1. Alright, so let's do the same thing in the code. I subtract all of this from 1. 
Yeah, it just shrinked again. But this time the petal also spread to other direction because now the wrench has the negative side. Next, I take this whole turn to the power of 2. Hmm, what happens? Now it's become symmetry. Since even we take the minus 1 to the power of 2, that's gonna be 1. Alright, so we need to flip this graph upside down to create a rounded shape. So, I subtract the whole this term again from 1. Hmm, nice. So, again, I do the same thing in the code. Hmm, awesome. Now we can safely give this stuff to some kid. <laughs> also, when we multiply a floating number here, yeah, you see that? We can adjust the deepness of the petal cut. So if I make this number smaller and smaller, the petal cut becomes shallower. So let's do that in the code. For now, I put one half here. Hmm, okay. Alright, to make it looks like a rose, I want to make the petal shape more like a rounded rectangle. So I change this exponent to 4. Yep, this is it. This is what I want. So I change this exponent to 4. Hmm, <laughs> I think we did it. So that looks pretty much similar to the original one. Let's cheat the answer, because all the equations we built so far is just my assumption. <laughs> so uh, this is the original code that Paul Nilander implemented by another language. I just copied from the website. And I see several differences between his code and mine. First, in the original code, this coefficient is pi divided by 2. So in degrees mode, that's 180 divided by 2. All right. And this value, in his code, that's minus theta divided by, uh, what is it, 8 times pi. So I change it like so. Alright, let's reload it. Okay, a bit different, mm, kind of just flipped horizontally. Next, the original equation multiplied 5 fourths here. Alright, let's reload it. Hmm, I changed the value a little bit. 2, 3, okay, it seems this term is responsible to the deepness of the petal cut along with this one half. Also in the original, this exponent is actually 2. But instead after that subtract one quarter here. Then take the whole terms from this uh, 5 fourths to the last one to the power of 2. Hmm, there's a noticeable difference. Okay, I play with this value a bit. Hmm, interesting. This term is affecting the petal shape in this way. Original equation also has sine phi at here. Hmm, that changes the proportion a little bit. And also has the hang down in the x and the z coordinate. That stretches the bottom side. Okay. But then multiply by cosine phi after the hang down. Oh, the bottom shrunk again. Because the value of the cosine phi is maximum at the top and minimum at the bottom. So that affects the oppository of the sine phi. I just realized that the theta range is actually start from minus 2 pi. Yeah, but that creates this unwanted byproduct. To prevent that happen, we can ensure that draw points only when the radius value is positive. Alright, it's working. And yeah, now we see kinda good byproduct that resembles the flower sepals. Alright, in the part 2, we will give the beautiful surface and slider control to the 3D rows. When I upload the part 2, I will put the video at the top right here.